Greetings, beacons of light. This is a wonderful time of the year, and so I welcome you to this transmission of Transcendence. This time of the year, December 2022, of course, brings us into the Festival of Light. And Transcendence is all about moving from the ordinary into the extraordinary, from the humdrum into the ecstatic celestial nature of our beings, so that we can literally feel how the light can be drawn down deep into the earthiness of our work and our lives as spiritual beings having a human experience. So before we go there, I would love you to really recognize, as I do, the wonderful reciprocity of your comments. This is a conversation for me, so as I utter these words, it's wonderful to receive a response through the comments that you leave. Don't forget that we are about to reach, hopefully by the end of this year, the subscriber list of 10,000 people on YouTube. So you can really help us, if you're not subscribed, to please click the button. And tell your friends about this unique outpouring from the 12 angels of Atlantis. I am merely a conduit, an emissary for what they give me. And if you're not receiving the weekly inspirational newsletters, which informs you all about all of the textures of what the outpouring and the creativity of the angels is at this time, including the major projects that I'm engaging in and inviting you to, then please do go to the website. There's a, there's a link in the description beneath this video. And as a result of this, there is a boon there is a blessing, which is that your name will be placed into a hat. And the reason why this is so is because you could, if your name is chosen, receive a soul reading from me at the beginning of the new year. So don't hesitate. Be diligent. Go and become a subscriber. And so thank you for being here with me for this moment of transcendence. Transcendence in the sense of the fact that we are beginning to see how we are light-filled beings. But firstly, we need to seek the light because so much of our lives are held by the duality that creates challenge. And today, this transcendence is a remarkable story. At least I feel it's remarkable. So I hope that you can feel its import, its significance, and how crucial the meeting that I'm about to reveal could be in your process. During a particularly turbulent time of my life, 40 years or so ago, I met a green woman. I don't literally mean <laughs> that her skin was green. I'm speaking of the social and archetypal feature of the nature of the green man and the green woman. You see, green men and green women are gatekeepers to the rich essence of life. They arise supernaturally and always when we most need them. And this happened, in my experience, when big change is always afoot. And as anxiety often precedes change, one's faith can often be momentarily toppled by the circumstances of life, until, that is, the ancient wisdom given by the green man or green woman pours from the supernatural world and begins to recenter and ground one. You see, green beings, in my experience, appear to arrive in completely unexpected ways. When serendipity shifts the richness of the air, and on this particular occasion that I'm going to reveal to you, it was a dark night when the chill of autumn caught my breath. And I was sitting, waiting for a train late at night at a deserted country station, when suddenly, out of the darkness, 
An old woman appeared and approached the bench on which I sat. And she began speaking to me in a really deeply rich, earthy voice. And I was both compelled and slightly shaken by her presence. She was as old as Methuselah and appeared to have been living on the road or the street or on open land for a long time. She was certainly unwashed. And yet her voice was like pure gold in the richness of its tone. And she spoke with a really refined accent. And I just knew that whatever she was saying to me as a result of the richness of her voice, that she was imbued with scholarship and I was mesmerized. Where had she come from? And she asked me if I had a cigarette and then began talking in astonishing ways as I lit the cigarette that I gave her. This was 40 years ago and that was something that we did as a form of habit in our lives. And she spoke of how to succeed in life, not by doing, but instead by being. And this, of course, perplexed me because after all, I'd been taught to believe in a very different paradigm and that the only way to succeed was by striving and striving and striving. My teaching had been that if I worked really hard and for long, long hours, I could achieve all that I desired or all that was desired of me by those who seemed to know better than I did, those who were my caretakers or my caregivers. Yet the wise old woman said something else. She said, you will never create the promise of joy within you. You will never grow satisfaction within you. You will never develop the dream of happiness within you just by doing. You didn't arrive here to accomplish the fulfillment of your soul by becoming a person that does what everyone else wishes you to do. You didn't choose to be born on a planet Earth to simply create a life of doing. Firstly, you must learn to be and to be still, to be at one with the cosmos. And then you will feel a way of becoming what your heart's joy is, so that you may sing the song of your soul freely, loudly, un uninterruptedly, and abundantly. Only then will the divine lead you to feel fulfillment, joy, happiness, and ultimate success. Remember, she said, pointing a gnarled finger at me, the way to success begins with saying, thank you. So she finished her cigarette and got up to leave and left me feeling utterly speechless with the resonance and the gift of all that she'd shared. And yet I was unable to call out thank you because I also heard the train was approaching the station. So as the train arrived and I got onto it, I turned looking in the direction of the wise old woman, but no one was there. So you see, the imparted wisdom was possibly just in a disguise of an old woman, whereas actually this was a gift from the divine. So I sat on the train thinking and thinking and thinking and feeling the depth of the way that I felt compelled but also at the same time shaken by her presence because this was an unusual encounter. Remember, the moment you're knocked down is the moment that really counts. So I decided to write this poem. This is what moved through my mind. And as I sat on the train, which was completely desolate, nobody traveling late at night, I wrote, Remember the moment you are knocked down. This moment is really all that counts, for this is the moment when you could truly lose you. 
This is the prized intake of breath moment when you can see the whole of your destiny. When your eyes are full of tears and your body shakes with fear, this is the moment to face the darkness within with courage, lightness, and heart of spirit. Because you are fearful of the dark, because your being loves the light, you are only fearful of the fall. Because you've been so high with love before, you may say the world is ugly and downbeaten, but remember, this is only because you've been looking at the floor. And so look to the stars and remember to see in their amplitude the ancient ones of old, full of light, full of love, full of youth, and full of wise counsel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then the train suddenly arrived at a station in London and I disembarked and went to the place of my dwelling at this time. This all take, took place 40 years ago. I hope that's moved you in some way to the possibility of all the points of reflection within the story. Remember, this has been an imparting of transcendence designed to uplift, to inspire, and to edify all that is taking place in your life at this time. And finally, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a really happy 2023. Namaste, namaste, namaste.